biological age versus chronological age. How old are you really? Hey everybody, Mazin here. Welcome to The Maximal Life. Forget about the numbers of years you've been on this earth. Scientists are now classifying a person's true age based on how well they are in mind and body. The new way of determining age is broken into two categories, disease span and health span. Our health span is the number of years we live free from diseases that affect the quality of our lives. Disease span defines the number of years spent with a noticeable decline in health. Your chronological age may be 55, but depending on your lifestyle choices, you could be in the health span more relative to that of a 40-year-old. Your biological age would then be 40. Sounds like a good deal to me. These recent classifications, disease span and health span, came along after the recent discovery of epigenetics which is being proclaimed by the scientific community as the most important discovery since DNA. This is really exciting stuff, guys. Epigenetics proves that we are, in fact, not tied down and distant to live out the same disease span as our descendants. While certain illnesses are coded into our genetics, it is our environment and lifestyle that determine whether or not those disease-promoting genes are activated. By making positive choices for living the maximal life, we have the power to activate disease-preventing genes and keep the disease-promoting genes laying dormant for longer. There is an old Cherokee proverb that talks of how within every man is a battle of dark and light, bad and good, disease and health. An old Cherokee chief tells his young boy, my son, there is a battle of two wolves within us all. One is of all dark. It's anger, jealousy, greed, resentment, lies, and poor judgment. The other is of light. It's joy, peace, love, humility, empathy, gratitude, and truth. The boy ponders these two walls within him for a moment and says, Yes, father, but which wolf wins? The old man smiles, leans in closer to his son's face, looking him directly into his wide eyes, and replies, The one you feed. The first time I heard that story, I felt it deep in my gut. Because at the time, I had a terrible case of the grind mind. I was 28, and I was getting the first of my nine businesses off the ground, and I was pulling 70 to 90 hour work weeks. I won't lie to you guys. There were aspects of the grind that felt glorious. The go, go, go culture of today lionizes the CEO who sleeps in his office. I try talking myself out of my daily fatigue and say, suck it up, Mazen. This is what it's supposed to feel like when you're doing it right. The money was starting to flow, and I was buying nicer cars and fancier clothes for me and my wife. More proof, I thought, that this is how I have to live to get ahead. I was skipping or scarfing lunch and joking with my colleagues, calling their lunch break the productivity thief. While I may have often felt like I was in control, the truth is I was overstressed, I was overweight, and I was overcaffeinated. I wasn't sleeping well, and I wasn't nearly as attentive to my marriage as a wife needs her husband to be. As a result, our relationship was strained and weren't enjoying each other like we always had in the past. She was growing resentful that I was never around, and I was growing resentful that she wasn't happy. Even though I was busting my butt to create a greater future for us and to our growing family. Today, I'm grateful to say, I was able to recognize how the daily grind was taking a nasty toll on my health and my relationships. Now, what I want you guys to know is that I did not do it alone. I had the help of mentors who walked this path before me and the wake up call of almost losing my sacred connection to my darling wife before I fully committed to being my maximal self. After a lot of soul searching and science based research, I came up with two major conclusions. First, the grind mind is a cultural conditioning designed to keep our noses down and our wallets open. And second, making small, 
but consistent shifts in my attitude and in my lifestyle would quickly add up to give me the incremental edge I hadn't realized I was missing. The body is a reporter, and when we allow the grind mind to dismiss the reports of our body, we activate the disease-promoting cells within our genetic code. When we listen carefully and respond appropriately to our body, we activate the disease-preventing genes and we're rewarded with natural energy. And that energy is the antidote. Today, I stand before you feeling 10 years younger than I felt 10 years ago. You will too. Maximal Achiever Zig Ziglar said, the man who earns a million but destroys his health in the process is not a success. So why do some people seem to age differently? Why are some people whip smart and energetic at an old age while other people become sickly, fog-minded, and tired? Imagine two men, Sam and John. These guys are the same age, let's say 45, and they've been friends since grade school. They meet for lunch at least once every couple of weeks to catch up. Before they can even be seated, Sam is already complaining about how tired he feels. In fact, John cannot recall the last time he asked Sam how he was without Sam replying, I am tired, man. Sam always looks stressed, and it doesn't help that he keeps getting those sinus infections. Sam often remarks to John, you are lucky, man. You have been maybe blessed with good genes. I mean, look at you. We are the same age, and I look way older than you. And Sam is partially right. Even though these guys are the same age, biologically, John is younger. Sam moves as though his muscles are stiff, and he's always furrowing his eyebrows. John, by contrast, is bright-eyed and smiling all the time. He's calm, and his body appears to be relaxed confident. Sam just figures he's just better genes than I do. But Sam knows John has not lived a life that is free of difficulty. John recently lost a parent to an illness. The startup company that John just started and he's been working hard on is often tittering toward running out of capital. In fact, Sam is far more financially secure than John. Yep, Sam's decide it must be good genes. Is Sam correct? That John has just been blessed with better genes? Or is it the way John chooses to exist in his environment that has kept him from aging the same as Sam? Genes or environment? Actually, both are critical, and it's the interaction between the two that matters most. The real difference between these two men's rate of aging lies within the intricate interaction between genes, environments, and their lifestyle and especially how one or the other responds to those twists of fate that can rocket you to the moon or shake you to the core. You see, John is well aware of the genetic illness that resides in his chromosomes. He witnessed his father struggle and pass from chronic illness. But John never resigned himself to living out the same fate. And instead, he took preventive action. He changed his eating behavior and his mindset. Luck had nothing to do with his health or a beat attitude. John was making a daily effort, not only for himself, but for his children as well, and likely for his father too, I would imagine. As acclaimed researcher George Bray has said, genes load the gun, the environment pulls the trigger. The research I've uncovered reveals a completely different way of thinking about your health, both now and many years down the road. To fully form these new concepts, scientists had to find out what premature aging looks like at the cellular level. They had to dive deep into the genetic heart of every cell, the chromosomes. And what they discovered revealed how living a disease span can not only be significantly delayed, but also reversed. What they have discovered is what we are now calling telomeres. The scientific eye identifies telomeres as repeating segments of non-coded DNA that live at the end of our chromosomes. And what you need to know is that telomeres determine how fast your cells age and when do they die. Every time a cell divides, our telomeres get shorter, and the more worn down the telomeres, the less healthy the cells become. Okay, here is the part where I get really, really nerdy and excited, so just stay with me. 
Extraordinary and, quite frankly, shocking evidence produced in both American labs and labs across the world found that the ends of our chromosomes, these crucial telomeres, can be restored and lengthened. What does this mean is that the aging isn't a steady decline as we once believed. No longer is true that aging is a slippery slope toward infirmity. It is just isn't true. Aging is actually a dynamic process that can be accelerated, slowed, and even reversed. What was shocking for us and other researchers is that our telomeres do not simply carry out these robotic commands of a genetic code. Telomeres are listening to the reports of the body and responding to how we treat ourselves. And even more crazy, telomeres are not only responding to how we are treating ourselves physically, but also emotionally. The way we live, both in body and soul, determines the speed of aging and the aging process at the deepest level of cellular health. I'm standing here telling you I have scientific evidence how we choose to exist in the world and, how, and who you actually choose to be around and how you choose to treat yourself and others can and will override your genetic code. Are you astounded yet? Don't you love it when science and spirit irrefutably converge? As a scientist myself, this is what I call proof that life is truly meaningful, and it is what we call magic. Poor physical health can happen for a variety of reasons, but premature entry into disease span is almost always a sign that our cells are aging. How old do you feel? If your answer is older than your older age, there is a good chance your telomeres are getting worn down. Shortened telomeres send a message that it's time to fast forward the aging process. And to that I say, not today. There is plenty we can do to fight premature aging right where it lives, at the cellular level. There are three major categories for having a positive impact on our telomeres. The diet telomere connection, the exercise telomere connection, and the mind telomere connection. Keep an eye for future episodes as I fully intend to continue to update you with more research. I mean it when I say this is huge. For today, let's just focus on the diet telomere connection and stay tuned for further, for further and in-depth coverage in future episodes. Now, don't be put off by the word diet. I'm not about to assign you a food plan. The goal here is to identify the foods that cause the most telomere damage and the foods that provide the greatest telomere benefits. Food is a good place to start because we make food choices several times a day. It only takes a small but consistent positive changes made daily to gain the incremental edge. What's good for the cell is good for the telomere. And there are three predominant ways that food choices can damage the cells. I call them cellular food enemies. They are inflammation, oxidation, and insulin resistance. Certain foods cause inflammation of the body, and especially the intestines and the stomach lining, while other foods reduce and prevent inflammation. Just off the top of my head, some inflammatory food would include, you know, sugar, flour, dairy, artificial sweeteners, um, grain-fed heavily processed meats and trans fats. Oh, and also excessive alcohol consumption. Actually, excess consumption in general of almost anything can lead to inflammation. Now, anti-inflammatory foods would include berries, ginger, green tea, coffee, uh, wild-caught salmon, or anything rich in omega-3s, uh, turmeric, beets, leafy greens, olive oil, coconut oil, and also garlic. That should be a pretty good list to start from. Okay, so... Next to oxidative stress, which is caused by free radicals. Free radicals are basically unstable molecules that try to stabilize themselves by bounding with and attacking our cells. The effect are similar to how a banana turns brown when exposed to air. Oxidative stress takes a real bite out of our telomeres. Foods that are uh, considered to be fighting of oxidative stress include goji berries, cranberries, blueberries, uh, raw cacao, kidney beans, and cilantro. I also want to point out that many of these anti-inflammatory and antioxidant ingredients can be taken into a shake or be formed into a supplement for convenient and concentrated boosts. Then we have insulin resistance, 
which is the leading cause of diabetes. And right now, diabetes is practically an epidemic. I can make this one really simple for you guys. Added sugar is bad for your telomeres. Added sugar increases insulin resistance, oxidative stress, and inflammation. It is a real triple threat. Now is a great time to make small but consistent positive changes that will support your health span and lower your biological age. Feed the wolf that serves your maximal self. Start by protecting your telomeres from the cellular food enemies, inflammation, oxidative stress, and insulin resistance. Pick one category that appeals to you the most and take it one day at a time to gain that incremental edge. Thank you so much for joining me today. We will certainly be talking more about this extraordinary discovery as the science continues to evolve and as more information is revealed to us through living the maximal life. If you like what you have seen and heard, please subscribe.